Hey everybody, so we're going to begin this episode of the Camp Esri Kitchen here in the greenhouse. As you can see, we've been talking about all the peppers we've got, and I even got some help today. So Augur's in the Camp Esri Kitchen today. Hey guys. One of the things that we're going to do is we're going to show you how to make these sweet and spicy pepper rings. Really super easy to make. Um, we've got an abundance of peppers. I talked to you guys in the last episode how we do the five pepper blend. But we're going to show you. Maybe you have a greenhouse. Maybe you have a garden and you just have a ton more peppers than you know what to do with. This is a super, super cool, easy, quick recipe. These are incredible. We eat these on everything. You can obviously throw them on burgers. You can throw them on pizza. You can throw them on nachos. What else do we eat these on? Cold cuts, um, salad. Cold cut, salad, sandwiches. These are really, really good. And you can make them spicy. We make them a little bit spicy. Or you can just make them sweet. Um, there is kind of a bread and butter uh, base brine to them. And we're going to show you how to do that and can them up. And you can put them away and have them all year. But we really, really like to have these. We actually had some last night on nachos. So we're going to go ahead and get into picking a bunch of these peppers. And uh, just kind of follow along. pulled some tomatoes out of there too. I think we're going to dry a few more of those. But we're going to go ahead and get these peppers all washed up. And uh, once we get them washed up, then we'll get them cut up and we'll talk to you a little bit more about how to make these awesome sweet and spicy pepper rings. All right, now that we've got them all washed up, we're gonna go ahead and start cutting these peppers into rings. at the end of cutting up the peppers and you want to go ahead and mix uh, them together real good. We also cut up a little bit of onion and uh, about a whole uh, bulb of garlic and we threw in there also. But you want to make sure that you go ahead and mix that up really, really good. And then one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the whole mixture of peppers when we're done cutting them all up and we're going to go ahead and put them in the refrigerator for a few hours to get them nice and cold and chilled. That way when we go ahead and put them in the jars and put the hot liquid on top of them, they tend to stay, stay a little bit more crisp that way. So once we're done with all the peppers, we're going to go ahead and take that whole mixture of peppers and we're going to put it in the refrigerator.
right, everybody. So for the rest of our process for our sweet and spicy pepper rings, we've moved inside the gourmet kitchen here at uh, Camp Esri, a.k.a. the camper. Um, one of the things that we're going to do next is we're going to show you how to put together your brine and your seasoning for um, your pepper rings. One of the things you may want to do to make it super easy, and it's what we're going to do today, is you might want to just go ahead and get a pre-packaged bread and butter mix. This is uh, Mrs. Wages Zesty Bread and Butter Pickles. Um, I know they've got these at Walmart. I think I picked these up at Family Farm and Garden. There's some other, I think um, Ball may have a um, seasoning pack as well. But just in case you were curious about the ingredients and stuff that were in here, a lot of times in the past and years in the past, Audra will go ahead and make her own brine. So uh, Audra, what are the basic ingredients somebody would need in order if they were doing bread and butter. Now this says bread and butter pickles, but again, it's the same process. We're just using peppers because we have an abundance of pepper. So Audra, if somebody wanted to do bread and butter pickles or bread and butter pickle rings, what are the basic ingredients that we would need in order to do that? So the basic ingredients would be um, your vinegar and your sugar, um, which is the, the majority of the brine, um, but you would also put in um, mustard seed, celery seed, turmeric, ginger, and maybe some peppercorns. All right, so that's basically it. But again, if you want to do it quick and easy, um, just get yourself a pre-mix. So we're going to go ahead and take you through the process of actually doing the brine. And just so you know, the process that we're using here, we're trying to make this as simple as possible so that anybody can do it, even in their camper or at their house. Um, not everybody has access to uh, a canning pot. Um, or a pressure cooker. So one of the uh, methods that you can do this at any, even a camper stove or uh, even in your house or your apartment is you can do a process called hot packing. And that's the process that we're going to actually take you through. We're actually going to hot pack these uh, pepper rings. So next step is the brine, putting that together. So I'm going to let Audra take us through the process of making this brine with a premix. So one of the first things that we need to do is um, get our jars ready. We get our jars ready by um, putting them in the oven. We get the jars hot so that when we put our hot liquid in, it doesn't burst the jar. Um, we also put our lids and our bands into, um, into a pot of water and we bring that pot of water to a boil so that it um, so that the lids are hot so that the seal part gets kind of sticky and that helps when the um, liquid cools down. Once we pack everything hot and the liquid cools down, um, the cooling process is what helps to create the seal. Um, so it's important to make sure that all of our stuff is nice and hot. It also helps to make sure that everything is sanitary and sanitized um, so that bacteria doesn't grow inside of your processed foods. All right, so I usually make sure that my oven's at three or 350 and then just pop them on in there. And they can set in there and get hot while you're making your brine. Okay, so following the recipe on the Mrs. Wages uh, batch, we're going to use um, eight and three quarters cups of the distilled vinegar, and we're gonna use seven cups of white sugar. Um, a lot of times, instead of just doing all white vinegar, I'll do maybe my three quarters of a cup or a cup of the apple cider vinegar as well. And sometimes I will add just a splash of the crushed red peppers just to add a little bit of extra.
we're going to pop it on the stove and bring it to a boil. Okay, so now that our brine has come to a boil, we're going to cut it back just to a low simmer. And then we'll go ahead and pull the jars out of the oven and begin packing them. So it's always easier to use the wide mouth jars, especially when packing. And as you're putting the peppers in, you want to kind of smush them down so you can fit as many in the jars as possible. He's trying to think of something that rhymes, you know, like Peter Piper packed a peck, a pack of pickled peppers. pepper rings. <laughs> something tells me that wasn't quite right. Making a mess here. Yes, you are. But this is nothing new. <laughs> Be editing that part out. So after taking the pepper rings out of the refrigerator, we've got the jars all packed and super, super tight. And now we'll go ahead and do a couple shakes of pepper flakes in each jar. So now that we have the jars packed nice and tight, we're going to take this hot liquid, our hot brine, and start putting it into the jars. We're going to use this just to make things a little easier so we don't make quite such a mess. We'll just start scooping out of here and start filling the jars. I usually only fill my jars up to this top ring. That way everything has a little bit of room. So now we're gonna take a clean rag and we're gonna wipe off the rim just to make sure we didn't leave any brine on there. Um, we want it to be clean so that the seal is able to adhere properly. And from here we can just take our hot lids and rings. And I'm just going to pop them all on really quick and then I'll seal them up. And again we do everything while it's nice and hot. Keeps the jar from bursting. Um, makes sure that that little adhesive part under the band is able to um, activate so that it's sealed. So we just want to twist everything on good. We're all done. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Camp Ezra Kitchen. Again, once your uh, jars seal up, put them away. We're actually doing burgers tonight, so you can also just straight up eat them right out of the jar. Not bad at all. Pretty good. Sweet and spicy pepper rings right out of the Camp Ezra Kitchen. You can do it too. Thank you guys. God bless you. We'll see you on the next one.